welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented by the Women Business Owners Alliance. The WBOA consists of women entrepreneurs. We have a membership of over 120 members. The business women that you will see on our program are all members of the WBOA and are excited to share their expertise and knowledge with our viewers. So sit back, relax, as they wow you with their willingness to share. My name is Carlene Hoffman, and I'm with The Clutter Doctor, and this is my co-host. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shagnon, owner of Kim's Upholstery, and our two guests today are Donna, he Donna Hebert of DH Designs and Nancy Howard of Nancy Howard Landscaping Designs. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. So I know today we're going to talk about staging your home to be placed up on the market. So Donna, um, how important is it to stage your home when you're getting ready to put it for sale? Very, because it really increases the uh, amount that you get for the house um, and it can sell up to 90% faster. So for more money and faster, which in today's market is really very valuable. So what's the first thing that somebody should do um, when they're thinking about putting their house on the market? They're going to call somebody like you who does home staging. And then what's the next step? How does all of this work? Well, I come into their home and it, it all depends what they're looking for. We can go through a list from room to room, what could be done if it's extensive work, if they need some construction work, or it could be as simple as painting some rooms, uh, decluttering, uh, rearranging furniture so that there's a better flow. Um, so we just go through room room and, and then they can either decide to do all the above or as little as they want. Or they can get help, they could do it themselves. I can give them a list of people. So it can go many ways. Now what about the person that's a pack rat and has a zillion collections all over the house and to them they're special, they love them. The most challenging. But when the buyer's coming into your <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's where you need some uh, diplomacy, I guess, would be the word. <laughs> that might be the word. Um, you really have to help them understand and walk them through it uh, to help them understand that it's not for them. It's to help them to emotionally disconnect. So the more they put away, uh, it will be easier for them to move away eventually, and they have to pack it anyway. So I, I usually try to encourage them to pack a lot of it away. Uh, that's the best. Mm -hmm. It's and always painful, though. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Now, go oh. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You're so excited about this topic. Yes, yeah, you, the clutter doctor. All right, I know. <laughs> um, so when you're um, getting ready to stage your home, should you be clearing out your closets and your cabinets a little bit? How does all that work into, into uh, the... Absolutely. You know, um, the most important thing is to have the, the prospective buyer um, see the space, see that they can fit their clothes in the closet, they can put their things in the cabinets. So the less <laughs> in there, two-thirds full is plenty for the closet, and you know probably more than I do about that, but it's all about helping the potential buyer envision themselves in the home and be able to fit their things in the home. Now I've also heard, and this will come into the landscaping end of this as well, that if a buyer sees like a mark on the wall or a garden that's full of weeds, that gives them signs of this house is a project. Is that correct mm. for the exterior? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be. My expertise is not so much in staging as in exterior design, mm -hmm. but um, curb appeal is curb appeal. Right. Whether you're looking to sell or whether you just bought a house and you, you want to create a uh, welcome you know, you want a easy path to the front door and you want it, yeah, to look beautiful and probably not tremendously high maintenance. Um, I think if you're selling a home, sometimes a beautiful garden can be, even if it is weeded, can look like, oh my gosh, what a lot of work a to take of work. care of. So, so Nancy, I know um, some of the tips they say, for instance, make sure your trash barrels out are not out in front of the home. Uh, what are some good tips that people can do to help perk up the front, their entry and, and that type of thing? Um, well, you know, a swept walk I think is a good idea. If there's a front porch, it should be nice and neat. Um, a, a beautiful potted, you know, seasonal flowers or seasonal greens if it's winter time. 
I don't think a, a lot of little pots would be a great idea, maybe some, okay. something simple. Um, sometimes shrubs have become really overgrown and might be blocking windows or crossing the path, so you'd want to you know, prune some of that, open it up. I think neatening up the edge of the lawn can, can help. You're unlikely that you want to make a huge investment in landscaping to sell a house. Um, trees are always a great investment, so but you know, depending on your time frame, it may or may not make sense. Now, if you've got someone that knows within the next year or so they're going to be selling their house and they've never done any landscaping, it's mm -hmm. just not their thing, what kind of simplicity type gardens can they put outside to make it appealing to a buyer mm -hmm. but not overwhelm them, like you said, with right. expense or maintenance right. while they're getting ready to do this? Um, I think trees are always a good investment. I really do. They're good for the environment. They're beautiful. And they get better every year, which I can't, I don't know what else you can buy that is going to improve every year. Um, so, you know, you want to look up. You don't want to put a tree that's going to be gigantic underneath the wires. Um, but other than that, um, what about Chances some flowers of, or mums planted mm -hmm. yep, just some seasonal for the open color, house? Sure, or absolutely. Which, which helps bring some color. A wreath even on the door or a right. new door color. It's quick and, and inexpensive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it makes that instant wow factor. Right. Yeah, you know? that's true. Now what type of trees would you recommend for something that Kim you know, just mentioned? It's hard to recommend just one tree without looking at the exact site because it depends on the amount of sun, it depends on the amount of space. Okay. Um, generally, I prefer deciduous trees to evergreen because they allow the light in in the winter time, which here in New England, that's a good we want we, <laughs> yeah, we want as much right. sun as we can yeah. get. Right. Um, and that's a sell big selling point for a yes. house: light and bright, yes. and people you don't want to make it darker. And right. yet, uh, you know, a beautiful deciduous tree actually is light in the landscape, light and color. You know, I like to think about fall color. Think about all four seasons. Um, and then scale, you know, depends on the scale, the size now, of the property. And I know a lot of times with older homes, you drive by and they've got these rhododendron bushes, but they have just like totally overgrown. They're covering the porch, they're covering the windows. Yeah. What can a homeowner do with something like that? They can actually take pruning very well but they look funny at first. So I'd be very careful. If you want it to look great quickly, be very careful. You can prune them down to nothing, and then if you have time to allow it to grow back, you can keep renewing. But um, it sometimes even makes more sense to just remove it entirely and put in something else. So what's the time frame? Let's say I know within like a year and a half I'm gonna sell my home. How soon can I cut that back to have it look decent? I think a year and a half is enough time to cut it back and allow mm -hmm. it to regrow and, and look good again. Yeah, but a couple of months, I, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Donna, when Brad and I were looking for our new home, um, we saw some things that we thought maybe could have been changed. So I know uh, in one spot we looked at, they had some pet mice out <laughs> and they also had a lot pet of mice. family pictures. Are there any other don'ts that people should be mindful of? Yes, um, like outdated furniture, too much furniture, um, wall color, you want more of a neutral, um, grays, tans, and then you can have pops and color in pillows or rugs just to make it so it's not too boring but not too taste specific either um, so I, that's what I help people with too what to put away what to take out I even bring in furniture sometimes if they don't have pieces so I, I think a big thing is not to have it too taste specific because you want them to notice the house not your furniture all right so you want the style so, to kind of be generic so right. it's not like it appeals too to a larger too contemporary amount or, uh, okay. Yeah, so they're not judging it by the furniture, which is what typically people do when they walk into a house. Yeah. They're not looking at the space. And then the scale of furniture is very important. Not to be oversized, uh, not too big for the space. Um, so that's very important. It's the whole feel when you walk into a room. If you like it, that's, that's what we try to do, yeah. to get more people to love the space as soon as they walk in. 
Now, being someone that works with fabrics and colors, I know that color is like a real strong issue with a lot of people. You either love or right. you hate certain colors. Right. So if you've come, you know, go to a client's house and let's say they've got like a navy blue living room and they've got, you know, a beautiful green in their kitchen or dining room, what do you suggest to them? To and sell it probably this looks home. really nice, you right? Know, it's, but it's their taste, exactly. It's their style. And that's where we have to. I have to be very careful how I explain to them that it doesn't mean they don't have good taste or it doesn't look good. But again, you try to make it more neutral, so that more people will like it, so they can envision putting their own things in there. So it, it's all about envisioning, and, and many people can't do that yeah. on their own. So how do you handle the people that? they would like to put their house up on the market, put it for sale, and then they start thinking about the work that has to be done. Like, uh. oh, now we have to change the carpet or mm -hmm. paint the walls. And you know somebody's going to move in and they're gonna end up rechanging all of that anyway. So how can you get out of that mindset? That's a very good point, and that's what a lot of people say. Let the new owners, but I think years ago, that's what people did. But in today's market, people want to move in and do nothing. So that's my job to help put something that's going to, again, be more uh, appealing to a larger amount of people, staying as neutral as you can. Because very few people want to do any work today. Yeah, that's true. They want it done, turnkey, open, and done. All right. So that's what we, we go for. That's what we're looking for. So uh, we were talking earlier about um, clearing out your closets and your cabinets mm -hmm. and storing some of these items away. Where's a good place to store all this? So, you know, are we allowed to store it in our basement nice and neat? People okay looking at it there? Um, what yes. do we do? <coughs> I've, I've um, helped people do that. As long as it's neat and in a corner out of the way, depending on how big your space is, if you have plenty of space, you can do that. You could uh, rent a pod. A lot of people do that. They're going to be moving anyway, so they move some of their furniture out and just keep it. I don't really recommend it, having it in your front yard. Some people do. Oh, um, that's yeah. true because you Back drive to up the and curb appeal yeah. again. It's <laughs> really hard to work. Against. How do you landscape oh, for a no. pod? Right, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's be another show. Landscaping for pods. It's I definitely it. more challenging when the homeowner is still living in the space. They have to live in it, mm. and we live different for staging as we would in real life. So uh, it can be challenging. So that's I've actually even had families move out of the house for a while, move in with families and had it staged so that, you know, their kids won't ruin anything or in, and they can just show it and they've sold it a lot faster that way. So that's another, you know, not everybody has the luxury of doing that, but it definitely helps. So uh, it's helpful maybe if the homeowner and the pets are not there when the house is being shown, is that correct? Absolutely. Or even any signs of any pets. I know you're a dog lover and so am I and a lot of us are, but a lot of people aren't. So that's one thing we recommend, put the dog things the away. The dog dish away. Yes, and, oh and bring dear. it, some, yeah. yeah. Because sometimes people just think it hasn't been maintained or something happened to the carpet because there's a dog there or a cat. Mm -hmm. So that's another very important thing to keep in mind. And pets have got to be somewhat difficult because, I mean, we get used to our own pets and you don't notice the, the odor from a pet. That but too. You get someone coming into your home and now is there any suggestion that you give people for things like that tactfully? <laughs> 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 Not no. really. Um, it depends on the time of year. A lot yeah. of times I recommend to open the windows, get some <laughs> fresh air. <laughs> yeah, it's really That's difficult. A tough one. Yeah. It, it really is, and it really, you know, there's all kinds of air fresheners, but how much does that work? Mm. So, yeah, it's that's another. Now, what about yeah. baking cookies? What I was going to mention that. Yeah. That's kind of an old thing. Okay. Um, I, I know people still do that, but they don't. It's not really recommended anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of like it's ran its course. But it's isn't the like smell a, of like something home baked? You people just walk in and it automatically feels homey to them. Mm -hmm. you know? That's true. Uh, I, d I don't do that, or I don't <laughs> have people do that, but it, it's not bad. Beca and you have to be careful with other scented candles and things, too, now, because there's so many allergies and people are really sensitive yeah. that you have to be really careful with that, too. So I guess of all of them, the, the cookies still would be better. Or baked <laughs> bread, the homemade bread. That's breads. true, especially yeah. the winter seasons, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. So, um, Oh, I forgot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> okay. 
Because <laughs> okay. it seems like people usually put their house on the market in the spring. Is that really, truly the best time? Uh, the, you're shaking your head yes. Um, I think that's what everybody thinks because we're, everybody's ready for a new beginning. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're mm -hmm. sick of a winter and they just want to get a fresh start, buy a new house, buy a new car. So mm -hmm. it makes sense. But um, uh, people do it even in the summer, but a lot of times if they have families or it's a family area, a uh, neighborhood, they really w you want to get it the beginning of the summer because mm -hmm. pe families want to be in before school starts. Oh, I see. So th it depends on the demographics. Mm -hmm. um, so winter probably wouldn't be a good time? It's not the greatest. Really? But okay. They still do. People still do because they have to maintain the driveway. There's the ice and showing the house, people getting it dirty. And but you know, people do. But I would say the spring is the biggest, yeah. the biggest most. Season. Yeah, I guess you figure season. before the holidays, people probably don't want to be involved yeah, in that right. one. Right now, to get exactly. They don't want to think about it. People aren't looking at homes. That too. Yeah. So this is a quieter time, right? So, so I remembered that question. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Do you help people um, find places to donate their things, specifically furniture, the bigger items? Do you have good recommendations for that? I have some, but okay. many times <coughs> they're, they're giving it to their, ch their kids. A lot of times it's people trying to downsize, so they give their uh, dresser to one, a chair to the other one. But I, I recommend uh, Big Sisters, Big Brothers, oh, right. uh, Cancer Connection. Uh, all the uh, the above. The local. Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's really great because as an upholsterer, I, I get calls a lot of times from people that they just want to get rid of a piece of furniture and do I want it, you know, and it's like I don't need yeah. another project because my house has that clutter. <laughs> 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 no, your house doesn't. So, <laughs> but, house you know, so that's, yeah. that's a really good recommendation. I, I really believe that. And it also helps yeah. the homeowner feel like they're giving to someone else that can use it right. so they don't feel like, oh, it's too good to get rid of. So it's a win-win, I think. Um, someone can use it, you know. So, so Donna, with you, how does it all start? With an initial consultation? Yes, initial consultation. And it usually takes about an hour to two, depending. Uh, like I said, with Occupied, it takes more time going through everything and, and trying to explain to them how important it is for things to look good when they're not there. And sometimes I even have them take pictures. <laughs> of how their bed should be made or how something should be set up. Because they're showing it to a lot of people. They have to go out, you know, and they probably forgot what it looked like. So mm -hmm. that helps. But I also do a lot of vacant properties. So I bring in furniture and just set it up. And so that's a little bit easier. No one, no one can um, mess it up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so there's two aspects. <laughs> And Nancy, how does it all start with you? Initial consultation as well. So mm -hmm. can you take us through that process? Um, for a landscape design, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I usually spend about an hour. Um, I like to see the inside of the house and the outside, and um, it's fun. It's a it's a combination of the homeowner and family, and what they want out of their property, what activities they might enjoy, whether it's kicking a ball around or growing tomatoes or outdoor dining or growing herbs or whatever it is so it's what they want and then you look at the actual land and what are the capabilities mm -hmm. is it flat is it sunny is it shady is it sloped what's the orientation is it noisy is there a view and so you take these two things and kind of, it's kind of like a puzzle you figure out how you can get the most of what they want given what they have and um, but in that first hour, it's mostly about asking questions and learning and kind of assessing. And, um, you know, sometimes people really just want an hour to understand what they have. What, you know, what is this plant? How is it growing? How, what's the best way to take care of it, this tree? Or, you know, how can I simplify? The previous owner was a gardener. I'm not a gardener. You know, what can we? And so sometimes it's really a question of some advice. But oftentimes people do want to move ahead and come up with a plan and then a strategy to maintain it or make changes. And um, I usually work longer term than, than 
a quick, you know, a, a quick, quick fix. decoration yeah. to, mm -hmm. to make it look nice, but right. really thinking about the outdoor space and how is it used and how can it improve over time? Because um, it's always growing and changing in the landscape. It's never, it's never yeah. done. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Which is what's great about it, but also one of the challenges that it's, uh, it's always in flux. And so and the challenge of keeping it alive. How you're no, shaping right. it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a gardener. Yeah. It's what growing else? or decaying, you know what I mean? So, so yeah. if someone wants to add a little bit of color and they've got a shaded area, what are two plants you su could suggest to that For, person? Well, impatience. Impatience. Or, you know, very easy way to put in a lot of, it's a ground yeah. plant and it's yeah. just seasonal, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of color yeah. all summer yes. and it's an easy one. Begonias, the tuberous begonias. I don't really love the little wax begonias that much. Um, and then there are different perennials that, um, I mean, green is a color. Yeah. You know, so there's True. a variety of hosta. And there are some, there's a Japanese forest grass that's really beautiful for shade. It's very yellow, green. I recommend that often. And uh, oak leaf hydrangea is a nice shrub for shade and has some fall color. Um, there's a lot, you know what I mean, a lot to choose from, but um, it's easier to actually see a place to come up yeah. with a specific recommendation. But I always get concerned for the mailman because a lot of people around our area like to plant flowers around the mailbox. Oh, right, and then you've got the and bees. And then the bees are yeah. buzzing around and oh. he has to open up the box to put the mail oh, in. The yeah. bees are flying around. Yeah. You know, yeah. I never thought of that. My ma mailman would like you now. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like me now. <laughs> we planted a Joe Pye weed right by the porch, and that thing attracted so many bees. I had to move it because we we lived on that porch. But it got it was scary late summer. Yeah. How many? You know, it was just like alive. So. Yeah, See, and do, I'm the one out there with the camera that. taking pictures of you the bees. Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Running great. The other you want to encourage <laughs> those pollinators. You know, yeah. it's very important, but maybe not right where you walk or right where you sit. So for you, Donna, someone that's getting ready to contemplate this idea, but they know they need to paint, what are a couple colors you could suggest to them that would be a good color to put on their wall if they're thinking of putting their house on the market? Okay. Um, well, right now, the newer neutrals are grays, different shades of grays, which goes with every style and everything. Which, so I recommend that most of the time. You know, be, before it used to be beige and tan and taupe, but still is taupe and, and gray. So it's a nice soothing color most people like it at first they say gray you know but once they see it um, everybody seems to love that color so that's what again going for that most people will like yeah pretty much the, the grays yellows used to be very popular but they found that a lot of people really it's not not a lot of people do not like yellow huh. for walls oh no yeah so that's what studies show. Okay. <laughs> I know it is funny. Right, yeah. like, hey. Well, again, <laughs> Not that I'm going the majority else, of people. Yeah. Yeah. I know people I know. do have strong, strong oh reactions my gosh. to colors. Yeah. And even though it's an easy fix to most of us to paint, a lot of people don't want to even, they can't see beyond it. Yeah. And new homeowners, so. like you mentioned, don't want to move into a house yep. and see projects immediately as they open exactly. the door. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right, well, thank you both for joining us today, and thank okay. you for joining us, for you, the viewers. We hope that you learned a lot from our information about our guests today, and if you want to learn more, just check our WBOA website, which is www.wboa.org, and we hope you'll join us next time. Thanks again. See you soon.